Inshallah, I will commence with a short recitation of the Quran for purposes of Barakah. And then, Inshallah, I deliver a short talk. After which, we will officiate the Nikah, Inshallah. And after that, Inshallah, there will be a meal served. We hope to complete by the time of Salat al Isha. Seize perhaps the gullibility of our daughter and so on. 
So for that reason, he may come home and he may see her, he may ask her questions and so on in our presence. And when we say presence, close proximity, and he may ask as many questions as he wants and she may do the same. They may then agree or disagree. If they agree, they may want to meet again and again and again. The minute they feel that now it's we don't want to continue with this, they now break off completely. And it's quite easy because you would not have been attached. The minute there is an attachment, it's quite hard to break up. Then you say, no, you know what, even though I'm not so much for it, but now everything has gone so far, we've already had three children, now we'd rather get married. <laughs> Allah protect us. So with us, it's not supposed to be the case. We are supposed to be doing this in a proper spiritual manner. Marriage is actually a spiritual union. It's not just a union of fun alone, but it has spirituality in it, which makes it even more fun. May Allah protect us. Thereafter, if they do agree to continue, you have an acceptance from the other party. In the presence of a minimum of two male witnesses, and you need to have something known as a mahar. A mahar is not a dowry. A mahar is, I like to term it a down payment. You know what's a down payment? That means this is my first amount, the rest are to follow. <laughs> mahar is a gift from the groom to the bride. Pure gift. Today, mashallah, if Abdul Rahman doesn't mind me making mention of, he had spoken to me earlier, what should we give? I said, well, they need to decide it. He says, well, they are easygoing people. I said, you're lucky. <laughs> so, mashallah, a gold dinar, a proper gold Nabawi dinar, and 10 silver dirhams have been given as maha this evening. So it's something very good. It is more symbolic than anything else. It is just to say, look, your responsibility of food, clothing, accommodation, looking after is now mine. I'm the husband and this is the gift to you. And she does whatever she wants with it. Remember, in Islam, a female has her own ownership and possession, which the husband does not have a right to enter into or to usurp. He can only guide her if she's going wrong. Look, don't spend in this direction. So we ask the Almighty to help us understand the right of the woman in Islam. Uh, then you need to have also the father of the bride giving the bride away. That is the ideal situation that should be happening. And this evening, inshallah, we will be witnessing that. So the father will be the guardian and representative at the same time, known as a wali, wali giving the uh, bride away. If there is a difficulty or an issue with that, then inshallah, you can speak to the ulama. Sometimes, you know, people are deceased. Sometimes there is another problem and so on. You speak to the scholars and you try and get an understanding and explanation. Perhaps another person can fit that position. Uh, once that happens and all this has happened in one city, the two are declared married. So there's nothing happening more than that. So today you will hear a question posed to the father of the bride. Do you give your daughter? A question posed thereafter to the groom. Have you accepted this? And he will say yes. And we will make mention of a Maha, Maha meaning uh, the gift given to the bride, and we will make mention of the witnesses who are witnessing here this evening, no one in particular, but everyone who is seated here. So that is as far as how it goes. Look at how simple it is. We ask the Almighty to grant us ease and goodness. The second part of my talk this evening will focus on what a happy marriage works around, or what it works with. Number one, first issue is the issue of trust. If you do not trust your spouse, you're wasting your time. Trust comes now. It is built and sown right now. The seeds of trust are sown right now. So you trust one another, come what may. When you hear an anonymous caller calling you, that is a lie. No matter how true it sounds, it's a lie. Throw it out, you will be happy. The minute you are to entertain someone else and their stories, you are not going to be happy. And the day you break up, they will be laughing. And they will be excited. May the Almighty protect us from mischief makers and may He make us from those who can help our spouses trust us. There's no point in saying, trust me, trust me, but everything you're doing is testing my trust for you. May the Almighty grant us goodness. Okay. And this leads us to something else. We need time with one another. Spend maximum time with one another. The Prophet says, Liyazaka baytu. You want to succeed in life? Spend maximum time at home. Your wife, your children. SubhanAllah children and perhaps your parents and so on when you're at home especially after the evening prayer he says if you do not have something constructive to do make sure you're at home 
Because mashallah, you're sitting with one another, you're talking to each other, you have time to bond with your family and so on. Nobody doubts you because 90% of sin is committed after the sun sets. Have you thought of that? That is what the Prophet, peace be upon him, says. You go home when the sun sets, meaning after the night prayer, go home. Unless you have something constructive and beneficial to do. So if you want to solve your marital crises, you need trust, you need to spend maximum time, quality time. This means your friends, sorry for looking at you, but your friends become secondary. Your wife becomes primary first. Which means if your friends feel bad that oh, this guy is now, you know what, he is controlled by his wife, they can keep on uttering those statements for as long as you are happy. Doesn't mean anything, mashallah. See all your friends are giving me dirty news. <laughs> Allah said, God us. This is a fact. You want your marriage to work, your spouse comes number one. Your immediate family, number one. Thereafter, your friends. So if you have 911 from them and from them, you know where to go first, inshallah. May Allah save God us and grant us goodness and may He open our doors. It's something very important. People don't know how to prioritize. You want to go on holiday? Take her with you. You want to get somewhere? Take her with you. And another thing, transparency. But they all start with T. We said trust. We said time. Now we're talking of transparency. Be transparent as possible. Don't have hidden agendas in the closet. You know, the phone has got three locks. Why? First one, in case she gets through. The second one, in case she gets through. The third one, she'll never get through. What's the reason? If you have transparency, nothing will go wrong. That having been said, do not go into your spouse's phone for nothing. Don't. No matter what. Don't. This is the policy we've taught people as counselors today. We are in an age of advanced technology where people send MWAH so many times to people they hate just to say hello. Have you seen that? People say love you when they actually hate you. Allahu Akbar. So if you see something on the phone of your spouse saying love you or a little heart, you should know that that is not actually genuine. Today we are in an age of people being fake. When people have proven it to you by living to you, that's good enough. Although we are taught to utter. That brings me to another point. Reassurance of the spouse or to the spouse of your love verbally and in other ways is very, very important. Keep on uttering it to them. Keep on every day in different ways. Look at them, smile at them, and you utter these words of how much you love them. You make a difference. No point in saying, can't you feel it? Come on. Come on. What don't I do for you? That's not good enough. As much as you do for them, you still need to utter the words of love for them. And every day, just like you are engaging in an act of worship, you know, you need to tell them how much you love them in various ways. You know, you need to keep on looking at them, staring at them, how beautiful they are, because you don't want them to feel that coming from someone else than yourself. The minute that happens, we are in a danger zone. We ask the Almighty to grant us goodness. And we always tell people, you know, you're supposed to dress for your husband so that he can appreciate you. The difficulty is husbands do not appreciate their spouses. So pass a good comment. Oh, you're looking awesome. You're looking gorgeous. Wow. You know, and you can even pretend to be blushing if you want. <laughs> Allah protect us. <laughs> the beauty of it is when someone else utters those words, they will be very cheap. They will not be turning towards them. But if you've never uttered sweet words, romantic words to your spouse, the minute a person in the mall begins to turn around so badly, they will get that attention. The devil comes and makes one feel that, you know what, I don't even get this look from my own spouse. So now when they're going to the mall, they all talked up. But when they're at home, you know, they're smelling of the cooking and the onions and so on. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us and grant us ease and goodness. I am a person, I'm sure you all know me, we press the red button. We like to speak reality, not fairy tale. It must be applicable in my life and yours and believe me it works. Believe me it works. Thereafter we have the Almighty who has taught us not only trust, not only uh, time and not only transparency, but together with that tolerance. You need to tolerate some differences that you may have. You've been brought up totally different. Different parents, different sometimes countries, cities, likes, dislikes. Whatever is within the limits of the law, you need to try your best to adopt and adjust to it. Whatever is out of line, you need to make it clear. Look, this thing here, I'm not happy with it because the Almighty will be displeased if we do it this way. There you are. You've made your lines very clear. But for example, you know, you're thinking of buying a car and so on. So now you've settled on a BMW 5 Series and thereafter there is an argument, should it be blue or should it be white? Whatever the color is. Believe me, it's minor. If white, 
color is going to solve a marital problem, let it be white. Alhamdulillah. It's a minor issue. But you've got the car, you see? So you make the bigger decisions. Have you noticed? Mashallah. <laughs> Maybe Almighty God has goodness and ease. So you need to prioritize and know. If you disagree with everything that is said and you just want to be a pain, then the major decisions, you will never ever get them right. Remember, in your marital life, in, in the year, you probably have three or four major decisions to be made. The others are all minor. So when it comes to the minor ones, you can compromise a little bit more either way. To the degree that if either is compromising, then you find goodness in what is coming. May the Almighty grant us every form of ease and goodness to me. I've spoken quite a bit, inshallah, regarding what may make your marriage work by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Remember, never be vulgar. Your tongue, that's another T. Look at it. Your tongue, use it properly. Don't be vulgar, do not lie, do not say utterances that will displease the maker, no. And we ask the Almighty to protect us because the tongue is something that is repeated in the verses we shall be reading in a few moments. Every time the Almighty says, be conscious of your maker. And then he says, utter only that which is upright because 90% of marital problems are connected to the tongue. How you use your tongue, if you don't know how to use your tongue, you know, you will suffer a lot of turbulence. May the Almighty protect us from that type of behavior and the abuse of the tongue. Now I'd like to end off by the reminder of the Prophet, may peace be upon him, to those who normally attended the Nikah. He used to address all the people. You know, from amongst us, there are those who are not yet married. But when you look at this day, you need to tell yourself, one day I want to be here. So you need to start actively looking for a spouse. No matter who, there are two types of people who are not married. Either those who have never been married or those who have been married before, you've lost your spouse either through divorce or death. Don't worry. It's not the end of the world. You need to try again. And you need to make sure that you come right. And at the same time, look for the correct qualities in the spouse. And make it your aim to please your maker. If it's your aim to please your maker, you become such a fantastic person, character-wise, conduct-wise. You look at the rest of humanity. You look at all the other creatures of the Almighty and you feel you are in sync with them. Even if they do not happen to share your faith or even if they are animals, for example, in, in the real sense, or plants or the water, you feel so cool and calm because you are trying to please the maker. You're not a destructive person who is abusive and who has bad qualities. May the Almighty grant us goodness. So, those who are not married, you need to look at what's going on and it needs to give you a kick. I hope and pray, inshallah, today is 10, 11, 12, according to the date. Next year we're going to have 11, 12, 13, correct? So, I hope to be here again, inshallah, with a few of you guys. You know, it's, it's a good date. I'd like to think probably from a Gregorian, uh, you know, if you look at it from the Gregorian calendar. After that, you're not going to have a 12, 13 and 14 because there's no 13 months. So we ask the Almighty to grant us goodness, although I'd like to just quickly clarify there is no Islamic significance of the date. But it's something that's nice to write, 10, 11, 12, it's good, mashallah. Uh, and it will also be good to write 11, 12, 13, inshallah. The youngsters, I, I met some of them and I told them next year, inshallah, we want you seated here. But then when I was coming in, I changed my mind and I thought the messenger says when the nikah is ready, when the parties are okay with everything, don't delay. Because the more you delay, the greater the chances of committing adultery with a person you're ready to marry. What's the point? May the Almighty grant us safety and may He protect us at all times. Secondly, we need to realize and understand that from amongst us there are those who are married right now. Ask yourself, when I went through this day, how excited was I? How happy was I? Am I as happy or am I not as happy? Or am I even happier? MashaAllah. If you are even happier, we won't talk to you now. We say Noorun ala noor. Light upon light. We are so excited for you. You've actually worked it right. Perhaps afterwards we can meet at the back and exchange notes. <laughs> How you got it right. I'm happier than the day you were married. But we ask the Almighty to grant that to Abdul Rahman and Aisha and the others also who are getting married by the will of Allah. The others are those who are as happy. We say, oh, mashallah, you also got a good ingredient. Everything is working. Keep it that way. And remember to share your, uh, some tips with the others. You don't need to tell everyone, we're so happy, we're so excited. Because sometimes, you know, the evil eye can affect a person. And we ask the Almighty to protect us from that. Amen. But the third category is the one that we need to address. Those who are not as happy. You need to ask yourself today, why? What went wrong? And look at yourself critically. Was I the problem? That's what I need to look at. Was I the problem? 
If I was the problem, ask the Almighty for forgiveness, make amends, and get back home, resolve the problem, change your life. This is why the Prophet, peace be upon him, says, Nikah must be in the masjid, open for everybody to attend. There is no restriction of entry here. Why? Because everyone comes, they can sit and watch, get a reminder, and at the same time they can think to themselves, you know what, I need to resolve my own problems. I need to make myself a person who can learn a lesson from this, go home and say, look, I'm sorry. I'm really, really, very sorry. You know, we don't want it like the Imam in the masjid, he said, uh, when you go home, I'm sure you've heard this from me before, you need to make sure you praise the cooking of your wife. She's been working so hard in the kitchen. She's actually been there for so long. And whatever she cooks, when last did you say, wow, what a meal, Subhan, what a meal. Today I received an email where somebody said, and I'm sure you must have seen it, it's been doing its rounds for a few years. They say the son was watching his father when the mother had burnt the toast. And he came in and he didn't even notice that the toast was burnt. He didn't even notice. He ate it and he said, wow, that was such a lovely meal. And later on, when they were going to sleep, the son goes to the father and says, Dad, do you really like burnt toast? Because he uttered a comment, I love burnt toast, you know, this type of toast. Do you really like burnt toast? So the, son, the father calls his son close. He says, listen, son, burnt toast doesn't hurt anyone. But what you say from your mouth can be very hurtful. Look at the comment. The burnt toast doesn't hurt anyone. It won't. What you said from your mouth can be very hurtful. So just say, I love it. I like it. The only thing is just tell them tomorrow I opt for something else. <laughs> because then they'll get that for you every day. <laughs> so I will say that the Imam says, go home and praise the cooking of your wife. The man comes home and he praises the cooking. Wow, lovely dish. Oh, I've never tasted the dish. And the wife gives him the pan on his head. Boom. One shot. Oh, what happened here? She says, for 23 years I've been cooking for you. You've never praised my food. Today when the food came from the neighbors, you are praising it. You are praising it. So then he had to explain himself, look, I'm very sorry, it wasn't meant to be, and so on and so forth. So let us not praise the cooking of our wives 23 years down the line. You know, there is a lot of sacrifice that goes into that. And even if there is a little bit more, a pinch of salt and so on, so what? As we said, the words mean a lot. May the Almighty grant us goodness and help us. Inshallah, in a few moments we will hear the officiation of the Nikah. May I call you forward.